Hello, my friends. And what's happening today is terrifying. The occupiers have gone out the rails. And overnight, there was a confirmed new advancement on the Russians in the Avdivka direction. But um, let's go through everything step by step. Let's start with the fact that now, not only in the Sumer region, but also in the Chernihiv region, the occupiers are shelling all border settlements with intense fire. And the situation on the border is very tense. So far, no large formations for a massive breakthrough into Ukrainian territory have been detected. But the thing is, two years ago, nobody expected anything either. Meanwhile, missile launches from Belharat into Ukrainian territory have been recorded. Now, let's move on to the front. In the Kupin's direction, the occupiers suffered heavy losses. So they went back to regroup, and today only shelling is being recorded along the front line. The Russian advancement in the forest area, which was reported by the Ukrainian armed forces yesterday, hasn't been officially confirmed yet, so we are awaiting. In the Svatova direction, the situation remains unchanged. Shelling of Berestova continues, but no new attacks are reported. In the direction of Krimina, the occupiers are conducting offensive actions on the village of Terne today. Additionally, shelling continues, but as before, there is no success for the Russians, and the front line remains unchanged. In the Siversk direction, the occupiers continue shelling, but no new attacks on Belohorivka are reported. Today, assaults have begun in the Rosdolivka area, and the occupiers are attempting to extend the front line further. Perhaps uh, they want to create an encirclement for the Ukrainian forces located in the Belohorivka area of the Donetsk region. So far, they have conducted several attacks here during the day and tested the strength of our defense. So, we are waiting to see how events will unfold further. In the Bakhmut direction, there is a significant increase in activity, with battles raging around Bogdanivka, Ivanivska, Klesheivka and Andreevka. Moreover, there is a high volume of shelling, and nine attacks were conducted over the day. But the Ukrainian armed forces held their defense, and today the front line remains unchanged. In the Avdiivka direction, uh, the Russians conducted 32 attacks over the day, showing maximum activity. Main battles are reported in the Novobakhmutivka area, and, of course, from both sides of Avdiivka. Additionally, they have deployed a significant amount of forces for an advance on the southern flank, attempting to progress towards Donenke, Severne and Pervomaiske from the east. The battles for Nevelske continue. As for the situation in Avdiivka itself, it's a dire one. The occupiers have advanced another two and a half kilometers within a day, and the Avdivka quarry has completely fallen under their control. Consequently, the occupiers are successfully advancing towards Avdivka. So it's evident that the outer streets of the private sector are now fully under their control, and movement is continuing. While the advancement of the Russians toward the road hasn't been confirmed on some maps, on others, the front line is closer to the main road into the city. Despite this, the battles persist. Uh, the occupiers are aggressively pressing forward. There haven't been any changes on the southern part of Avdivka yet, so the occupiers remain on the outskirts 
uh, but there is no report of new advancements. So it seems uh, they understand that the main goal is to break through the, uh, to the highway. Therefore, they have allocated significantly more forces for this breakthrough. So how long Avdiivka will hold is hard to say. But uh, it remains hopeful that after Avdiivka, reliable defense lines have been established and the occupiers will fail to continue their success. If not, then the Russian movement may persist. Today, we see they have waste resources. Additionally, they continue to strike in the rear. Strikes were reported yesterday in Novogrodivka and Pokrovsk. So details are currently unavailable. Uh, in the Marinka direction, the occupiers are again actively shelling Hyorhivka and storming the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces towards the village. Rakhove is also under constant bombardment from the occupiers. Moreover, there is a complex situation in Novomikhailivka. All neighboring villages are under fire and there are ongoing assaults on the outskirts of the settlement. So far, there have been no confirmed successes for the Russians uh, within a day. However, foreign publications continue to claim that the occupiers have entered Novomikhailivka. The village of Novomikhailivka is located in the Donetsk region, south of the city of Marienka. According to build expert on open data analysis Julian Ropk, the Russian armed forces are advancing from the east, south and northeast. The situation in Novomikhailivka is becoming critical for the Ukrainian army. The Russian occupiers are advancing on the northern and southern flanks, as well as in the center of a small village. Now they control 10 to 15 percent of its territory, Ropk writes. And yesterday evening, the Ukrainian armed forces also reported. It seems that the enemy is entrenched in a residential area in Novomikhailivka. Overall, uh, we are awaiting official confirmation, but it seems we are losing yet another populated area. So, unfortunately. In the Vuhlidar direction. The occupiers haven't achieved success either in the area of Zolotanyva or near Priyutne. Today, only shelling continues and no new attacks have been reported. In the Zaporizhia direction, the situation has also stabilized. Russian forces are not launching new attacks and regrouping has begun. However, shelling continues along the entire front line. In the Kherson direction, uh, the occupiers are intensively shelling the right bank, especially near the village of Krynke. Attacks on the Ukrainian military positions also persist, but they haven't achieved success. They are utilizing all available resources for shelling, including aviation. Uh, Russian military correspondents report that the attacks are now supported by armored vehicles, resulting in casualties among their ranks. Today there were five attacks on the enemy's bridgehead in the village of Krenki. We have losses. After a short rest, units of the long-suffering 328th Airborne Assault Regiment of the 104th Airborne Assault Division were again thrown into the assault. Units from the 337th Airborne Assault Regiment of the 104th Airborne Assault Regiment and the 26th Motorized Rifle Regiment of the 70th Motorized Rifle Regiment were also involved in the assaults. The assaults were supported by artillery, mortars, and tank fire. And today, as always, there was a complete lack of interaction between assault groups, artillery, tanks and our attack drones. The word chaos most accurately describes our attacks on the enemy's bridgehead in the village of Krenki. Meanwhile, the general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces has confirmed that the Russians have terminals for Starlink. The Russian army uses Starlink satellite internet in Ukraine. The Ukrainian military spoke about the presence of satellite terminals of Elon Musk's company in a tweet by the Russian army. According to one of them, 
Starlink terminals with activated accounts are massively supplied to Russia through Dubai and operate in the occupied territories. Photo, 1, Starlink V2 terminal at the positions of the Russian armed forces, screenshot from the publication of Defense 1 magazine, 2 to 3, Starlink packages in the video of Russian volunteers, 4, Starlink in the Russian online store. And that's all for me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.